Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where an entitled father gets put in a chokehold by a martial arts expert. So this just happened last night, Friday the 13th. I had been having some pretty bad abdominal pain since the 12th. Well, yesterday I went to a local clinic and found out I had appendicitis. The clinic called an ambulance and I was transported to the big hospital. When I got there, they took me to a room, had me strip butt naked, and then rushed me to the OR. As we were moving through the ER, this Karen stopped us and asked us why I was being rushed before her daughter, since they've been here longer. The nurse told her that I was being rushed for emergency surgery. She said, I don't care, my daughter is in pain and he needs to wait his turn. The nurse said, Ma'am, your daughter has a sprained ankle. This gentleman could die. She reluctantly moved out of the way when she saw a couple of police officers start walking towards her. Well, surgery went great and I didn't die. Was released at 12 o'clock this afternoon. Our next Reddit post is from MC Jimbo. I enjoy this sub frequently, but never really thought I'd have a genuine entitled parent story to share. However, Today I cross paths with the Mega Karen, and although she seriously disrupted my day, I'm kind of tickled to finally be able to contribute something. I work in an office building with about three dozen companies operating on the premises, and because of the odd layout of the building, we have six different parking lots. I prefer using the hidden lot that requires you to drive through one of the indoor lots to reach, which between being hard to find and all the spots being marked compact is usually less crowded than some of the lots closer to the road. Not to mention that the door into the building from that lot is right next to my office, so it's convenient in every way for me personally. Today, it was raining cats and dogs when I arrived at the office. For some reason, my normal lot was unusually full. However, someone pulled out of a prime space just as I arrived, giving me a much shorter walk through the wetness to reach the door. I exchanged polite nods with the guy leaving, then pull into the space behind him. As I'm getting out of my car and grabbing my laptop bag out of the back, I hear some distant car horn honking, but think nothing of it since it's practically on the other side of the lot. When I turn around to head inside though, Entitled Mother rolls up in an oversized SUV and slides to a stop on the wet pavement between me and the building, splashing me with a bit of puddle in the process. That spot wasn't for you. Excuse me? That parking spot. I was waiting for it and you stole it from me. Me, now irritated. Where? The highway off ramp? No, I've been looking for a parking spot for 20 minutes, and when one comes open, it's for the first person waiting. At this point, I look up and take stock of the whole row of empty spaces she had ignored to come over and harass me about taking her space. And consider the fact that the claim she's making, that whoever was waiting first gets the first available space, is not now, nor has it ever been a real point of etiquette. I gesture. There are plenty over there that were open before I even got here. Take your pick. No, I need that spot. You need to move now. Why on earth do you need to have this spot? She gestures to the back seat. So my baby doesn't get wet walking from all the way over there. I look in the back seat and the kid looking back at me was easily 10 to 12 years old. Also, over there couldn't have been more than 50 feet further to walk in the rain. The entitled kid says, sup, that's not a baby, he'll be fine, and anyway, your car wouldn't fit in this compact spot. I move in point so she can read the six inch tall letters marking the spot as smaller than average. But if you go around that side of the building, there's another lot that isn't compact spaces. Whatever, are you gonna move or not? Your fat butt needs the extra exercise anyway. Me, already cranky because I hadn't eaten yet. Now pissed that this orangutan in lipstick is talking to me in this way. Well, I'm definitely not moving for such a colossal jerk. Have fun walking in the rain. I hope you get struck by lightning. I quickly walked away while this charming example of humanity hurled abuse after me. Now, admittedly, about 15 minutes later, once I settled in at my desk, I started feeling really badly that I told this woman I hope she gets struck by lightning, even if there was no lightning going on in that rainstorm. I continued to feel bad for all of five minutes when the sound of a car alarm caused me to go to the window and look out. This woman had parked somewhere, 
gotten out of the car and was now keying the heck out of my driver's side door while Entitled Kid recorded it on his phone. I took a quick picture of them in the act on my phone and immediately called building security to tell them what was going on. So guess who got arrested for destruction of property and assault? Oh right, she also spit on and scratched the security guard who went to confront her. So assault. And everything that went down from the beginning to end was practically right under a security camera. So it got a good look at her, her kid, and her car, including license plate. So no way she's getting away with it. And since the slur she etched into my car door is homophobic, she may also get charged under hate crime laws. So that's fun. If I end up going to court, having to testify, ever dealing with this woman again, etc., I will totally post an update. <laughs> and I, for one, cannot wait for that update. If you want to find out what happens to this Karen, subscribe to my channel because I will absolutely cover the update to this story. Our next Reddit post is from AM Rinder. So, some backstory. I own a Jeep. Hashtag Jeep Life. Fully built, lift kit, ADD bumpers, the whole shebang. So, one day, I'm coming home from work. It's a summer day, the roof is off, and I'm having some open top fun. Stop at a red light and suddenly screech bang. I drive forward slightly and go back to assess the damage, and lo and behold, it's a Mercedes C-Class, a new one as well. Completely destroyed from the front, and my beautiful Jeep had no damage apart from a few scratches. I went to check on the passenger side of the Mercedes. Got them out. Luckily, she was unharmed. Those Mercedes are definitely safe. Under a minute after she's out of her car, she starts screaming about how I wrecked her car. I told her calmly that she was the one who rammed into me. I think she understood how my hitting her would be impossible. I offered to share our insurance details because I knew that Mercedes damage doesn't come cheap. But she said she didn't have insurance. She insisted that I pay her $10,000 in cash. How she got this number, I don't know. I said that was just plain wrong, as one, she hit me. Two, it's her fault for not having insurance. She then went on a ramble on how her kids needed the money, and they had no money at the time, and now her kids will have to starve because she'll have to pay to fix her car, and how it'll all be my fault when they're on the street tomorrow. Yeah, on the street with the Mercedes, my butt. That is why you should have insurance. But no, she said that she would call the cops if I didn't pay her. I refused, as this is just dumb. So then she called the cops. Yeah. Cops came, assessed the damage, and asked us what happened, and she said, and I quote, He packed into me at full speed on a red light. Shaking my head. Then they asked me what happened, and I told them and it became a he said, she said situation. Luckily, a shopkeeper was there and saw the whole thing and even captured it on a surveillance camera. Needless to say, I came out on top. Cops got her for reckless driving and driving without insurance. She then started yelling at the cops about how they would just let a criminal get away. They explained that I did nothing wrong and that they now had video evidence. The partner of the cop came to me and told me if I could drive, I can leave. So I got in my Jeep and left. Never want to have a Karen experience again. Not worth it. P.S. If you have a lifted Jeep with heavy duty bumpers, a Mercedes can't do much damage. And then OP posts an update. So Karen read my post. Who knew? I certainly didn't. I just received a direct message from Karen in all caps as expected. She basically said that I already destroyed her car and left her penniless and her children starving. I'm so over this. And now she wants me to take down the post because it defaces her. She said, and I quote, You know this is illegal, right? You have no right to talk like this about me. You already wrecked my car that I have to pay out of pocket for. If you don't take this down immediately, I will report you and sue you for attacking me. 
I explained to her that neither her real name was mentioned nor the place where this happened and the only thing mentioned was her car and how she was being a big butthole. But no, she threatened to sue me for defacing her beautiful reputation. How? So yeah, that happened. I advised her against this, but she said that she has my license plate number and if this post is not gone by tomorrow, I'll be receiving some papers. I'm not worried at all. She doesn't have a case as I didn't mention anywhere her name or any revealing info at all. But if there's anything I miss that can cause me a problem, please tell me as I really don't want to take the wrong step. <laughs> if this Karen found the Reddit post, let's hope she also finds the YouTube video. And in case she does, be sure to say hello to this Mercedes Karen down in the comments. Our next Reddit post is from Sweep the Leg. This story happened several years ago after I first became an assistant instructor at the martial arts school I train at. We share our building with several other small martial arts schools and disciplines, so pretty much everyone is tight and knows each other. A few days beforehand, a student from the karate class had asked to join the class that I'm a part of, which is for jiu-jitsu, which is a grappling-based martial arts for the uninitiated. His mom drops him off for his first day of class, and about 20 minutes later, entitled dad shows up. He just sits down and watches the class as I teach basic groundwork, which included some basic attacks and reversals from the guard position. The entire time, his son is looking extremely uncomfortable, though I don't know why. After about an hour, the class is over and I dismiss everyone and go to greet some of the parents, see kids off, and get ready for the next class. I'm passing by the entitled dad when he pulls me aside to talk in private. My son ain't no homophobic slur. I take a second, being taken off guard by his tone as well as smelling the alcohol on his breath. Did somebody call him that in class? No, I'm just not paying you to teach him this homophobic slur stuff. I'm bringing him here so he can know how to kick some butt. He says, raising his voice. He also gives me a punch on the shoulder as if to emphasize his point. Sir, please keep your voice down. He doesn't need to know how to lay on his back and spread his legs like some pussy. He says, raising his voice even louder. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to please leave. F you. I ain't bringing him for you to get your rocks off and try to convert him, you homophobic slur. African American slur. Parents and students are now fully tuned into what's going on. His son comes over and tries to pull him away, but he ignores him. Sir, you want to settle this right now? I got my friends Smith and Wesson out in the truck. They can help us solve this and give you some medicine. He starts moving to the door and I move and block the door. Sit down. I'm doing my best to sound intimidating, but in reality, I'm sweating bullets. I'm confident in my skills, but this guy has like 40 pounds on me. And no martial artist wants to be put in a situation like this. All I know is I'm not letting this guy who just threatened me anywhere near his car. He takes a swing at me and I end up tackling him to the ground. I put him in a chokehold, applying pressure each time he tries to move or get out. I stay on top of him for what feels like forever for the police to show up. Long story short, they end up taking him and I later found out from the mom that they were in the middle of a divorce. Needless to say, Entitled Dad was banned for life and every measure was taken to make sure he couldn't come near me, the school, or his son and ex-wife again. Mom ended up with custody, kid is still training with us, and from what I understand, Entitled Dad is in and out of jail. Today, I'm gonna get drunk and then pick a fight with a martial arts teacher in a martial arts dojo surrounded by martial artists. And then I'm gonna threaten him with murder. What could possibly go wrong? Our next Reddit post is from Mr. Woodles. A few weeks ago, I was at work in the city where I live, Truro, England. And it was the height of tourist season in a place that's known for the tourism industry. My job was to sell very nice Thai spa products from a converted tuk-tuk van. It's very nice stuff, all handmade, never tested on animals, smells very strong and lovely. It was about midday and I start hearing these little snaps and cracks coming up the street. No big deal, I think, as I go back to my book. I hear these little snaps get really close to me. 
I don't like this as I have Asperger's syndrome on top of exceptionally sensitive ears. I can hear those anti-theft scanners at the front of the shops. Then I see this, shall we say, rotund family coming up the street. If you're a fellow Englishman, you know the type. Council house scum of the highest order. Americans, I believe you would use the term white trash. It was their two little gremlins throwing these little fun snaps at everybody. Old people, dogs, little children, disabled people, everyone under the sun essentially. And then one lands at my feet. Cue unhappy me. Can you please stop your kids throwing those? Predictably, this was met with, F off you jobs worth dickhead. Maybe learn how to parent then. This one was met with more expletives, laughing and giving me the finger. I was exceptionally displeased by this. I whip out my trusty phone and call the non-emergency police number 101. One report of causing a public disturbance later, I go back to my book. And note with some satisfaction that there are more police officers around the place about half an hour later. Later that evening, I call back with a reference number I was given. An officer did catch up with them, yes, and the adults in the group have been arrested. They wouldn't give me any more information than that, but luckily enough, one of my sister's friend's mom is in the police force. And wouldn't you know it, she happens to know what happened. They were arrested for assaulting an officer, resisting arrest, drug possession, and causing a public disturbance. Karma, karma, karma. That was r slash Entitled Parents, and this is r slash Puppy Bloopers. Today, it was raining cats and dogs when I arrived at the office. Dog. Dog, no. Dog, no. Today, it was... Today, it was... Raining cats and dogs? I wasn't calling you dog when I said that. Ow, dog, you hurt my ear. Pooch. Pooch ums. Dog. Today, <laughs> today, it was raining cats and dogs when I arrived at the office. Dog. Today, today, it was raining cats and... You go. I fire. You want to cuddle? I can cuddle with you. <laughs> dog. I don't want to play. I want to work. I can cuddle with you for like a minute. And we can, we can get some pets. And some puppy smooches. But that's it, man. <coughs> oh, woof. <coughs> oh, woof, woof. <coughs> Dog, I gotta work for real. I can't, I can't play with you. <coughs> I got a job. I got my fans. They're counting on. Come here. Come here. Nope. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm getting back to work. Today. <coughs> nope, I'm not getting back to work. <coughs> Today, it was raining cats and... Please, do you mind? <coughs> oh, <woof. coughs> my ear. It hurts. You're hurting my ear. Dog, be considerate <coughs> and respectful of the humans in the household. <coughs> oh, woo, woo, woo. Puppy dog, where's your toy? <coughs> Go chew your toy. You don't want to chew the toy. You want to wrestle with me. But I can't wrestle with you, dog. I have to work. I have to work, puppy. Puppy dog. Puppy dog. Today, it was raining cats and dogs when I arrived at the office. Dog. I need you to go away, please. All right, I've got to take you on a walk.